Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David and today we are going to go over an algorithm question. That's what we do on this channel. Um, I've been meaning to create some harder questions or harder level questions, but uh, those take more, they, those take longer time for me to solve them and then to kind of present it in a way that's going to be uh, acceptable on the YouTube flat platform. And um, I just haven't had the time, so that's pretty much why I haven't done, done those. Today we're gonna go over a medium level question though. And if you have not done this yet, um, or this question yet, go to the description down below and click on the question URL and solve the question, or at least attempt it. And if you have, uh, and if you can't get it, then come back, watch the explanation video. And if you can get it, just move on to the next one. Um, as long as you got it within a reasonable time frame, right? Um, the whole purpose of these questions is to prepare ourselves for interviews. And if we take forever on medium level questions to easy, that's not the goal. We want to get those done quickly so that um, the expert level questions, yeah, we can take about 30 to 40 minutes on those. But if you are taking that kind of time on the medium level questions, uh, I do encourage you to come back and kind of watch me explain it because there are processes to this. And um, you just got to get those down before the interview. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. This is a medium level question called a redundant function. <clears throat> It's just here, I completed already. I did it right before making the video. Um, and I already went to the test tab, but let's go back to that in a little bit. First of all, let's uh, write a function. Let's read the question. Write a function redundant. So that's the function name that takes in a string str, that's the parameter name, and returns a function that returns str. And so right now, as you write the function, your parameter is going to take in a string but your output is not a string itself. Your output is a function that if someone were to call that, would return the string. And so <clears throat> let's go ahead and read the notes. Your function should return a function, not a string, yeah. You might think, okay, what's the point of that? Why would I return a function and not just a string if the only thing I'm, I'm, my function is gonna be doing is returning another function that returns a string? Well, <clears throat> It's for practice now, of course, but uh, in the real world, it's something called higher order functions, and it goes into that space where um, stuff like this is useful. The first thing that I questioned as I read this question was, uh, what do our tests look like? And uh, constant, or so, okay, so let's take a look at this. Usually it's console here, uh, go into the test tab, and um, you can see redundant, that is the function we're creating, and they're saving it to a variable, f1, f2, f3. The, this is not just the function itself, but this is actually calling the function. Remember, if, the, if it's the function name and a parentheses, you're calling it, not just um, looking at it. And so uh, they're calling this, and what is being saved to f1 is not our function, but it's our, the return of our function. And, though, and so now, if we were to have successfully returned a function as the return result of the function we're creating, it's gonna get hard, but stay with me. We're creating a function, and if that, if the function we're creating, the redundant function, is returning a function, well, we're, we should be able to call f1, right? Because that is just a variable for this, and so f1 is being called. Remember, the parentheses after the function name is how it looks like when you call a function, and so now they call f1 after they have saved it, and okay, is that gonna be equal to Apple or not? Yes. Now if this right here was Apple, if this returned Apple, F1 is now equal to the string Apple. So this is the wrong case. If our function, if the function redundant we're creating, if that returned the string Apple, rather than returning a function that returns the string Apple, well, it would break when they do this because this would be not a function, but rather just a string. And if you do a string and parentheses, they're gonna be like, what's going on, like you're not, uh, this is not a function, you can't call a string like that. And so hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, trust me, just rewatch the video. Uh, it might help just hearing this a couple times. One last time, I'm gonna repeat it. We're creating a function that returns a function, not a string. Usually we've been returning functions that return an integer or a string or something like that. This one's returning a function, which is why we're calling it right here. We're calling redundant. And see see this test? That's a, this is what's gonna tell us is it true or not. And redundant is not, the function we're creating is redundant, or that, it's the name redundant, but it's not here, right? 
Why is that? Well, because we called it here already. We call redundant the function name and parentheses be right next to it. That's how you call a function. Um, we gave it a parameter and we're expecting the return of this redundant function we're creating to be a function that we can call. And so that's why we're able to do f1, which was the function, f1 parentheses. We get to call it because we actually returned a function, not just a string. And now if you were to call f1, what does that give us? A string, the string that we were first given. And so let's go ahead, let's jump into the code. Uh, redundant string. Easiest way to do this is to, let's see, just uh, let's create a function right here. All right, my keyboard is not responding. Okay, there we go. Function, um, let's call it func. We do that, and we're gonna do it the old-fashioned way, func, and then return. Oh, what happened there? Return str, right? And so what does this do for us? Nothing yet. All we did was, if you call redundant function, it's going to create a function inside of here that is going to return a string. Well, how do we get it to the point where they wanted us to return a function, right? Return the function that returns a string. Well, for now, we've created a function that returns a string. So now we just have to do the rest of it. Return function. All right, <clears throat> we get that there. I think that goes there. Yeah, let me get rid of it. I don't think we need it. So um, here, it said return a function that returns the string. Uh, return a function that returns a string. Here, we just created it. Great, we created a function that returns string. Well, now they actually wanted us to return a function that returns string. Okay, and then right here, the difference between this, if you don't know the difference, the big difference is this one is returning the function. Line six, we're returning a function. Line seven, we're calling this. And so if we were to actually return this, we would be calling this inner function right before we returned it. And therefore it would actually be the same thing as just returning the string. And so we don't want to do that. We want to do return func. That is returning the actual function. So let's go ahead and wait for that to check out for us. And most likely it will. That is what we're expecting. And then I'll show you one other way um, just to format this. Um, one other way to format this test. We can go ahead and let's see if it does that. No, it does not. Let's return. Uh, there's this way of this. This is also the same thing. See how we didn't call it, just like how instead of doing a func with parentheses, because that's calling it, this is actually just defining the function and returning it right, right away. And so let's go ahead and check this one as well, see if that works. And we're just waiting. Cool, that works out too. So those were two different ways to create it. The only reason why you would, well, this is a simple enough question where you can just do this and move on. Um, I personally would do it the second way. You might think, okay, code golf, not really, not in this situation because this is just a new way of creating functions. Uh, this is the older way that is often used. Like if you go to work and you're not at a new company, um, most likely a lot of the functions are going to be used or written this way. And there's nothing wrong with it. In an interview situation, perhaps um, it's just gonna take a little bit more time and it's gonna take a little bit more space on the whiteboard if this is the kind of question you're gonna get on a whiteboard uh, situation. But most likely in an in-person interview, you're not gonna get these, level of, these levels of questions. It's more like something you would see on a um, online interview. Uh, so hopefully, you know, uh, I don't have the submit final because I already submitted the final. It's already been completed, but those two work and that should kind of show that yeah, this is the correct solution. If you still don't get this one, um, I suggest looking into higher, higher order functions and or just re-watching the video. It, sometimes it takes the two or three times to understand a concept and this is a little bit different of a concept than what I usually go through. And so hopefully it was still helpful. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this one. And if you enjoyed the content, 
please like, comment, and subscribe. If you go to the description below, create an account with Edibit, and if you do become a pro member, that does help out the channel. And so if you do that, that is very much appreciated. Other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.